I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith, and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Parole. I appreciate you spending your evening with us tonight, a little bit of it. I'm happy tonight to introduce Greg Brown. Appreciate you coming, Greg, and sharing your story. Thanks, Earl. Um, such an interesting name. What's the background of your name? G-R-I-G-G. -G, yeah, Greg is my mother's maiden name. Oh, okay. And um, so... That's I have two last names. Oh, Greg Brown. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, it's almost like Greg. I guess yeah. I get, you get confused with that a lot. But yeah. yeah, it's, it's Greg, rhymes with big. Uh, so. <laughs> well, it's a great name, good strong name, and yeah. it goes well with you. With you. Well, you were born in the church, right? Yes, I am uh, fifth generation on both sides. Wow. And um, my family life growing up, my, my parents were church-going people. Yeah. And uh, Married in the temple, weren't they? And yes. Yeah. yeah, they were married in the temple. Um, they had a large family. They had eight sons. Wow. And... Um, Where do you fit in? With I'm number group? five. Okay, right I'm in the middle, the fifth, almost. Yeah, <laughs> fifth son. And so I had good parents, and uh, they had a lot of, of uh, heartache, though, a lot of, a lot of trouble. Uh, just seemed like bad luck followed them, and uh, as a couple or as yeah, children, as, as a or? family, yeah. yeah. Well, I had one brother bad. when I was just a little guy. One of my older brothers uh, was accidentally shot and oh. almost died. Came real close to dying, oh. and then uh, had another brother that uh, had severe burns all over his his upper body and face wow. from an accident, and uh, and then the, another brother, uh, the one, well, the one that got shot. He later was killed on a motorcycle when he was only 14. Oh my goodness. So, um, it's kind of little different tragedies and accidents yeah, along the way. Diff, yeah, and then, and then my father, when I was only 11 years old, was in a car accident and his spine was severed at the fifth vertebrae. And oh. So he spent the rest of his life as a quadriplegic, a basic prisoner in his own body. Oh my goodness. And my mother, uh, took care of him 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow! I'll bet you so, sons were a real support to her, though. And yeah, um, a lot we tried of responsibilities to be, yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah, it was so. Um, even though, you know, that was the overarching aspect of our life was just my my father being paralyzed and uh, yeah. So. But, but active in the church. Yeah, they were active. Um, you were active. I mean, you went to young men's and yeah, primary um, and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, I went seminary. To did yeah, you I do did. Uh, my, I had a four-year high school, and I went three and a half years of seminary. Seminary. And um, so, yeah, I had I had a good upbringing in the church. I had some some bad experiences with so-called priesthood leaders. Uh oh. Uh, I was. When you were uh, young, yeah, I yeah. was. I was kind of raised on guilt and shame. It was. It was a main. I think staple. some of us are. Yeah, I yeah. think it's uh, just so. the nature of trying to live the law. Don't you yeah. think you you, yeah. you never measure up and. Yeah, I never ever felt like it was ever good enough, oh. and uh, so. Uh, actually, now, <clears throat> so when I was when I was a child I had uh, some remember some Sunday school and primary lessons that I learned about Jesus 
And I remember I loved him as a child. And you were mentioning this earlier to yeah. me, and I'm just so impressed with that because yeah. I, my relationship was always, you know, I trusted Jesus, I guess. Yeah. I had a respect for him and appreciation for him, but my relationship was with the church. I just knew church, the church yeah. was true. Yeah. But at a young age, you felt Jesus was yeah. special. Yeah, and later I read Paul says in uh, one of the gifts of the Spirit is to know that Jesus is the Christ. Wow. And so I feel like I had that. And, um, but then again, here I am raised Mormon, and they're, uh, they're very uh, Pharisee-like, if, if I can say that. <laughs> and, well, you uh, can, because they yeah. are, but I mean, yeah. they live the law and uh, yeah. doing things on their own. And yeah. Yeah. And, and one of the things that really troubled me was they had these uh, priesthood interviews you do twice a year from the time you're 12 on. Sure. And um, right off the bat, boy, I was just filled with guilt and shame by what these priesthood leaders would say to me and, they, and these grueling, interrogating questions they would ask. And uh, so I literally thought that I was damned to hell. I did. I thought. Man, I'm going to hell and there's no if, ands, or buts about it. Isn't that a sad thing to, yeah. to push that on a child, <laughs> yeah. a young person? Because I, I, I believed them. I trusted what these guys were saying. And uh, yeah. so from the time I was 14 until I was 17, I was pretty down in the dumps. I was yeah. depressed. And, uh, and of course, um, I had a good childhood in, in uh, Burley, Idaho, but when I was 10 years old, we moved to Southern California. Oh. And then that's, that's when my father was in the car accident. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it was just a very stressful time. And, uh, and there, was, there was tons of pornography and drugs and, and alcohol in the environment mm, that I was California, in. Southern California, yeah. My older brothers were, were spent their lives drinking. And oh, dear. So that was part of my bringing up. So I had a lot of guilt and shame. and uh, Not keeping the commandments. Yeah, I wasn't good stuff. enough. Yeah. I was never, ever good enough. And, uh, but luckily for me, when I was 17. Yeah, tell us about this. Towards the end of my junior year in high school. And I, I had been struggling to, to get some answers from God. I, I was telling him, I can't go on like this. I'm either going to go jump off the Huntington Beach Pier and, and drown myself or... <laughs> <laughs> or something's got to change. And yeah. So I was I was trying to connect with God and and uh, trying to change my ways. And I was coming home from school. It was towards the end of my year in junior year in high school. And coming towards me down this alley was a girl that I vaguely knew from our from the high school. And I kind of knew her as a as a messed up kid like I was. Yeah. And but this time she was different. She was smiling. She was happy. She had a big Bible under her arm. She's walking towards me, and she's she's her eyes are big and bright, and she's she's look at, and she's excited. She goes, "Greg, Greg, have you been saved?" And I go, <laughs> "Not me. I'm going to hell." <laughs> you knew goes, where you were headed. <laughs> yeah. She goes, "No, no, no. You don't have to listen." And and she opened up her Bible, and she had some little tracks and stuff, um, and she explained to me how Jesus died and that He paid for my sins in a way that I had never heard explained before. Never heard that before, had yeah, you? Yeah, I always thought that you got to live all these rules and laws, and if you make a mistake, you got to go back to square one and start yeah. over. And and uh, so she just explained to me, and she had recently just just been born again herself. And A lot of enthusiasm, it she, sounds yeah, like. Yeah, she was yeah. very enthusiastic, and I can still remember, no, no, Greg, you don't have to go to hell. <laughs> Did this speak to you as uh, remembering back as a child that you had this love for Jesus? Did, Did this make sense? It did, yes. Yeah. And um, it made me connect with her. And uh, I was willing to listen to what she had to say wow. because I remember these, these wonderful stories I heard as a, a little kid in Burley, Idaho. Wow. And so um, after she explained these things to me and, and showed me some tracks and read scriptures like John 3.16 and Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. And um, what I gained from that was hope. All of a sudden, I went from despair to hope. Wow. And uh, it changed my life. It really did. And uh, I wish now that I had, had stuck with her and, and uh, learned more of what she had to say. But I thought, well, I'm Mormon. I, 
I'll go back to the Mormon Church. And, uh, yeah, that's where the true church is. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah that's, that's what I was taught and I believed. And, and, you know, the church always taught me that the Christians, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. They only have part of the truth and they're the liars and deceivers. And uh, So anyway, what I did was I went back to church and I decided that I was in God's debt. I was, I was a sinner and I owed God. Wow. And I thought, well, I'll go on a mission. Because my brother just older than me was getting ready to go on a mission. Okay. So from that time on, all my friends thought I had lost my marbles. And, you know, I stopped hanging around and going to the parties and stuff. With oh, them. you got yourself worthy to yeah. go to the <laughs> temple, I guess. Yeah. You went to the temple. Yeah, eventually. Um, and um, I didn't hang around with my friends or anything. All through my senior year, I just uh, worked. and Wow. And, uh, and I decided, well, I'm going to go on a mission, and uh, so that's what I did. I went on a mission, and I, I served the best I could. Where'd you go? I went to Orlando, Florida. Oh. And uh, that has a special ring to us yeah. Christians now, with Adams Road and the it Wilders does. and everything. I, have you met them? I, I guess. have. I've yeah. met them several times, and uh, Michael and, and Lynn, I both met them, and oh. uh, and they're wonderful people. I I just have uh, they're very dear to me. Yeah. And so how so did you feel about your mission? Um, did you preach Jesus, or were you preaching Joseph Smith and the church? You know, church? That's, that's what bothers me, is because even in my patriarchal blessing, it says that I will have a great ability to share the Joseph Smith story. And, and even though... In your patriarchal blessing. Yeah, wow. and so, you know, on one hand, I knew Jesus was my Savior. On the other hand, I thought Mormonism was the only true church. And I had to go out and sell it, and Joseph Smith, and uh, so there was there was some conflict over the years. I just I tried to live Mormonism at the same time I knew tried Jesus to have this relationship with yeah. Jesus that was different than what we learn normally in yeah. Mormonism. Exactly. Yeah, and it, it just wow. never quite worked, and so. So you finish your mission, I guess, and yeah, you have I finished my mission and got married in the L.A. Temple. And oh, just, did you? Just went to work and uh, raised a family and uh, active in the church. I know yeah, you were I a stake missionary, weren't you? And yeah, I was a stake missionary yeah. and uh, taught Sunday school lots of different times and yeah. uh, tried my best. Did a lot of welfare callings and uh, just an hour. always with this conflict of yeah being did did it. Did it become more and more difficult to listen to testimonies and to, to meetings? or You know, I never thought too deeply about it, but looking back, there was one time that I did get up in testimony meeting and just was so grateful for what Jesus had done for me. I'm looking out in the audience and people are got these strange kind of, This look. doesn't sound yeah. like a normal testimony. Yeah, yeah. and I, I thought that was strange. I, and I never, ever thought that I was a born-again Christian. I just never connected oh. the two. Was, you were a good Mormon boy. Yeah, I was a Mormon. And, who loved uh, Jesus. So, <laughs> uh, How fascinating. Yeah, so... Uh, Your wife was active and... Um, well, I've been married twice. My first wife was... Uh, she was what I call an Osmond groupie. So no. the church to her was just social. Just, okay. Social, yeah. And then... Uh, Don't worry about doctrine or yeah, theology or anything. Just, like, yeah, she didn't It was all about Culture social and thing, social, yeah. okay. And so, but she divorced me and uh, 12 years later, I, I married a really good woman. And, uh, uh, but we just couldn't make things work and we wound up going our separate ways. And, and one of the final straws was I was starting to go through this whole process of learning the true history of Mormonism. And, uh, oh, what led you to that? Well, actually, I decided that um, I heard uh, at a fireside that if you go to the temple and do uh, temple work, that your life will be blessed more than you can imagine. And so I went through this period to where um, I was going to go to the temple every week, and I was going to be as righteous as I could, and I was... I even went and bought brand new temple clothes, and I was just going to be the, you know, the spit shine Mormon. <laughs> and uh, I started going every Tuesday night, and um, then one Tuesday night, 
I saw this guy named Sean McCraney on the TV. Oh, and dear. at first I was I was defensive. Oh, just yeah. like I was. Yeah, yeah, I was defensive, and uh, I even emailed him and said something about um, you know, uh, said <laughs> one phrase. Uh, Oh, I can't remember, but anyway, uh, so I was defensive, and I, I didn't watch him for a while, and I, I kept going to the temple, and, uh, and then my wife and I were separated also, and uh, so being uh, the proud Mormon I was, I was kind of ashamed of myself, not kind of, I was ashamed yeah. of myself, and, uh, and I, I couldn't face the people in my own ward, and so what I'd do on Sunday was I would just go mile or so away and I'd just go to Sacramento someplace else and really? people started asking questions well next Sunday I was at another ward and I found one that I kind of liked and I'd, I would slip in the back door right as services were starting take the sacrament because that's why I went I was trying to stay connected to God yeah. and then I'd, I'd leave and this bishop I guess noticed me he snuck around back one Sunday caught up with me so I told him who I was and why I was there and who my bishop was and and uh, he goes, well, that's what we call poaching. Poaching, uh, Poaching, no? yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was poaching into his ward because I didn't live in his boundaries. Yeah. So, you know, I, Too bad. I, was, I was already really, really down and discouraged because my wife and I were separated. and uh, So I'm in shock all week long. That's, that's the last thing I need is more guilt and shame. Yeah, he's throwing that at you. Yeah. You're not going <laughs> to the right church uh, building. Yeah. yeah. So I'm... I'm in shock all week and the next Sunday I found myself standing in my living room looking out my living room window just thinking of where to go to church and I realized I'm looking right at the Roy Christian Church oh you're kidding yeah and I thought why not give it a try huh it was nine o'clock in the morning I saw a sign service nine o'clock I went oh my and goodness these, these people were wonderful they just welcomed me right in and uh, and I the music was wonderful. I, I was just first time you'd ever been to a Christian church. No, not not exactly. I'd, I'd visited. Uh, I remember I went to a Catholic mass one time on, okay. on Christmas Eve. I think it was. Yeah. And, uh, when I was a missionary, I actually uh, riding down a country road, and on a Wednesday night, we heard this beautiful music come from in this little chapel. My companion and I went in and just listened to the music for a while and then left. Wow. But, but yeah, basically that was my first yeah. th first time, and I. I just loved it. And was it a surprise to hear? Yes. Good worship music. Yeah, that's what it was. Jesus. It was worship music. Yeah. yeah. It was just people worshiping Jesus, and uh, and so uh, it seemed like this all happened real fast. But then I came across a book by Grant Palmer, and uh, that Insider's View of Mormon Insider's Origins. View of Mormon Origins. Yeah. And I had known about the book because I remember my eldest corn president saying, "Oh, that guy's." Apostate, don't ever read that book. And that was years ago. He really before. said that, yeah. yeah. And, you know, he but just he's got an, an, an institute director and yeah. all that stuff. So, you, yeah. yeah. So I never read it, but I, I, I think I just came across it in the bookstore. I don't remember, but I read it, and it was, holy cow. That answers all my suspicions I've had throughout the years, because I've had suspicions. Yeah. And it just opened up my eyes. And, uh, and then... Um, well, I started watching Sean McCraney, and and it's and then you, yeah. it's hard to be defensive, isn't yeah. it? When he's saying, "Here's here's a quote, and here's where I got it from," and right, exactly. and teaching yeah. things that are right in the church, basically, yeah, yeah. The church stuff, and then and then so here I am conflicted. I think I'm a, supposed to be a Mormon, and I'm learning all these wonderful things about Christianity, and I can't sleep one night. I'm laying there two o'clock in the morning. And I reach over and I grab my old missionary Bible, and I open it up, and it came to Romans. Oh just, boy! Just by coincidence. Yeah. And I had really never paid much attention to Romans because something happened to my father in World War II, and he decided Italians weren't his favorite people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Romans wasn't a book you yeah. wanted to read in the so Bible. So I'd come to Romans. Oh, Rome, that's Italy. I'll just pass that, you know. Yeah. But this night I read the entire chapter of Romans, all 16 chapters, and. By the time I was done, I was absolutely convinced of the gospel of salvation by faith in what Jesus has already done for us. And uh, oh, I was convinced. That's and, unbelievable. Yeah. 
And so... And you'd probably read the Book of Romans on your mission? Or yeah, yeah, there was actually, uh, I had underlined things. Underlined things. But I didn't understand it the way I did that night. No. And, um, and, and that's having your eyes opened, right? It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah my, I, I can read the Bible now, and I understand it. Um, and it's beautiful. I, I love the Bible. And, so, and it's uh, trustworthy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was learning all these things, and I was also angry because I feel like I'd been lied to and cheated by Mormonism. Yeah. And I'd put so much money and time and effort into it. And... Um, I wrote a letter to the first presidency, and uh, <laughs> explaining explaining these everything. Things yeah. I, I did said, you I'm, get a response? They sent it back to my state president. Oh, okay. And um, did uh, he respond? Um, he was very kind. Uh, Alan okay. Hall and Roy was very kind to me. He listened to me, and oh, at the same time, actually, when I went to deliver the letter. Um, they they wouldn't accept it at the church office building. They they told me to go bark at the moon. And, you know. Oh dear, <laughs> they didn't want the letter, huh? No, but uh, they said you can mail it to this address, and so I I wound up mailing it. But that same day, when I was downtown, I walked across the street to the church historical library. It's a brand new building. Yeah. And uh, there's my old stake present from when I lived in Huntsville, uh, Marlon Jensen. And yeah. He, yeah. Historian. He goes, hey, hey, brother, how are you? And he was very kind and. And I, I had Grant Palmer's book with me, and I was wearing a cross. And he goes, oh. what are you doing with a cross? Oh, heaven forbid, huh? <laughs> heaven forbid I have a cross. <laughs> and uh, so I told him all the problems I was having with, with the Mormon history. And um, he says, well, here's my phone number. Call me, and we'll make an appointment. And several months later, he, he, we had an appointment. And I went really? to his office, and, uh, boy, talk about plush. Man, I was... <laughs> wow, look at this place, you know. And uh, he says, that's what happens when you stay out of jail. I don't know what he meant by that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he didn't have any answers to him. Did you talk to him about different things yes, then? Yes, I did, uh, yeah. I had things Palmer's that Grant book. Palmer had yeah. brought up. And, and uh, I think by then I had Charles Larson's book about the papyrus. Oh, the and Book of Abraham. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he didn't have any answers. He just, he just didn't know what to say. And... I know. Yeah. I met with a church historian as well, you did, yeah. and I really covered those three things that have been big for me, the changes in the Book of Mormon, yeah. the 1830 Book of Mormon, the different versions of the first vision, and the Book of Abraham, yeah. and he had no answers for me. Yeah. And I thought, gee, th you know, this is a man that should really know. Yeah. And I assume he thought Marlon. Yeah, I thought he would know. Yeah. I, I was grateful that he he didn't have very much time. He, we only had a few minutes. He, sees it. he said he was busy, but you know he's kind enough to let me come in and talk to him. Did he realize you weren't being fed from what he had to say? Or did he sense that he had you know, won you back over or something? Uh, I, I had a sneaking suspicion that he knew a lot of these problems, but what is he going to do? He can't come right out and, and come clean with everything? Or, that's what I wonder. Yeah. Or he these would, brethren must know stuff. They, they know, yeah. They yeah. Know. You know, they've, they've uh, sold themselves to the church, and uh, yeah, but they, will, you know, they will not come clean. On it just seems to me that they're, they, they've got to know that one day they're going to stand before God. Yeah, they have to. That's one of the things that kept drawing me was this hypocrisy. I knew yeah. how God felt about hypocrites. Yeah. Say one thing, know one, a different thing, yeah. and yet uh, portray yeah. yourself differently. Yeah. So you've, you've continued on with the Christian... Yeah, I, I kept going to the Christian church. And, oh, and then by then, um, I did have a meeting with uh, Alan Hall, my stake president. And like I say, he was very kind and, yeah. and, and very sympathetic to me. He listened to me, and he says, Well, brother, I want you to go back to church. And I'm right here in the building where my ward's at. And uh, so it just so happens it's time for priesthood in my ward. And uh, so I left his office. I went to uh, my priesthood meeting. And uh, I had my Bible with me, and I'd been going to the Christian church, and I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, okay, let's talk about Jesus now, in, in priesthood meeting. And it's all business, and they're talking about Joseph Smith, and baptisms for the dead. I'm thinking, no, Jesus, let's talk about Jesus. You know, I'm sitting in the back, but that's what <laughs> I'm thinking. And uh, they never did get around to it. <laughs> Isn't that so, something? And then I had a, a, 
I made an appointment to talk to my bishop, and because uh, I wanted to be, you know, above board on everything, and I, I went and I explained to him all the problems I found with with the Mormon history and yeah. and all these problems, and um, I says, can I come back to the Mormon Church, but believe in just Jesus and the Bible? Oh dear! And holy man, he <laughs> he hit the roof. <laughs> so he, could I come back to the church? If I just believe in Bible and Jesus, just the Bible and just Jesus. He didn't That's like that, he didn't I'm like sure. That, no. Yeah, he says, "No, you're mocking God." Mocking, mocking God? I, I was confused. Anyway, and this is the Church of Jesus Christ yeah. of Latter Day Saints, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. And now I realize that actually the LDS Church is mocking God because Jesus did it all on the cross. Yeah. And Mormonism says, well, yeah, you, you got up on the cross, Jesus, and you died, but that wasn't enough. we got to do this, 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 It's not this. enough. Yeah. We're going to put so you... That's mocking God. Yeah, that's so. mocking God. Uh, Isn't that amazing? And when our eyes are open, there's just no turning back, is there? I mean, no. when God touches your heart. So, no. so you were seeing this same Jesus that you'd experienced back in as a child and yes. again at 17. Yes. You saw that again in the Roy yeah. Church and all the, the other churches you've yeah. attended. And then I was able to put two and two together and realize the gospel of Joseph Smith versus <laughs> yeah. the gospel of, of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. And I choose the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And, um, well, and so. it is it is a, his uh, gospel of Jesus Christ, and mm -hmm. all this other stuff has just been added to it. Yeah. And the Book of Mormon doesn't even cover no most of this, um, almost none of the yeah. s stuff of Mormonism. I think no, our guest last week kind of pointed that out. Yeah. Well, you've got just about thirty seconds. Oh. What do you say to the LDS people, Greg? First of all, I would say that I love you, Mormon people, all my friends, my neighbors, my family. I love you. And don't be afraid to read the Bible. Yeah. Please read the Bible, especially the New Testament. Yeah. Read the Gospel of John. Find out who Jesus really is because Jesus is God. Yeah. And, and read Romans and Galatians and find out what the true Gospel of Jesus Christ really is. And what Paul really taught. Yeah. yeah. What Paul really and taught. he got it from Jesus. Yes. And t what they what he did teach, Jesus and Paul and Peter, what they did teach and what they didn't teach. I right. think that's just as important. Exactly. Well, uh, Greg, I appreciate you coming and uh, sharing your story with us and uh, you're your delightful fellow and we appreciate it very much and uh, we appreciate you watching and as Greg says, you're following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Good night and we'll see you next week.